All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Corrad Loser. I hope you're doing well. So, folks, today I'm going to talk about the deadly riot that happened on January 6th at the U.S. Capitol. An unbelievable amount of video footage came out of the thing, and I'm pretty sure I watched it all. I was glued. I went down a hell of a YouTube wormhole. It became a bit of an obsession. And now here we are. A day or two after it happened, most of the footage available was long, unedited journalist or amateur journalist walking around with Blair Witch style footage going, holy crap, I'm in here, this is happening. And coupled with that was a truly unbelievable amount of footage that came from people participating in the riot that filmed themselves participating in the riot and then posted it or live streamed it so you can watch compilations of live streams where it's like yo what up twitch fam i just farted on nancy pelosi's desk please like share and subscribe for more and it's like did you just ask for likes and shares during your federal offense what are you doing and so that was a couple days after, watched all that. And now here we are about a month out, and now people are being arrested. Charges are coming down. So now YouTube is recommending me, I've probably watched 50 of them, short local news snippets, and they all sound something like this. Connecticut man Skylar Erickson, who online goes by the globalist Grim Reaper, was arrested today for his role in the Capitol riot. All of the evidence used to charge Skyler was taken from his own social media page. And you watch 50 of them and it starts to be apparent that I have never seen anything like this event where pretty much everybody has some alternative internet personality, which not surprisingly is much more exciting, much more uh, part of a community, has a purpose, most of the time thinks they're being contacted by the deep state. That's pretty exciting, right? And then, you know, so that's the globalist Grim Reaper. And then Skyler from Connecticut, you know, it's not quite as exciting. So let's talk about the one that everybody talks about. You can't blame everybody. He showed up to the thing wearing a buffalo headdress costume thing with the horns you guys know who i'm talking about i did a deep dive on him too his name is jake chanley from phoenix arizona and he showed up to the to the riot no shirt face painted american flag the full buffalo headdress thing he practices shaman he's a he goes by the Q, QAnon shaman and i he I guess he practices shamanism. What do they call it? He, shaman. But what that translates to is he just screams at the top of his lungs constantly to the point where it's like, dude, relax, please stop yelling. One, in all the interviews, you talk like this because you just totally blew out your vocal cords, okay? You sound like a lunch lady. Stop yelling. If you want to go out into the woods and shaman yourself a little bit, scream, let it out, baby. Do it. I support whatever gets you through your day. But to constantly be the guy that goes, ah, ah, and just screams in public, it's like, come on, man. What's the saying? Confidence is quiet and... Um, what is it? Confidence is quiet and insecurities is loud and you walk around screaming at the top of your lungs constantly. This lady just got out off a 12-hour shift. She has a headache. She doesn't want to hear you yell. This guy's been sitting in the waiting room of the hospital. His wife's dying. Real sad. Again, doesn't want to hear you scream. And he just, even the... the coming up to the riot the whole time he was like on the senate floor he stayed in there all day just going ah and it kind of comes off as getting content for his internet message board life but he's in there screaming ah and the whole thing just comes off as very attention seeking so he gets arrested he's on like the lower end of the charges he w was arrested for entering and staying in the building and um, he's been in federal custody. His mom did an interview saying he, he, he hasn't eaten since he was arrested. He can only have 
all organic food or he gets violently ill. And it's funny to watch like the, the big, the QAnon shaman, larger than life, spear, painted face, the horns, you know, and then they really quickly turn back into a pumpkin once you know, the charges come down and all of a sudden it's Jake from Phoenix that if he has one turkey sandwich that's not full-blown organic, he's going to poop himself. And um, a lot of people were talking about, you know, his buffalo headdress horn thing, but I started thinking I almost got stuck more on his face paint. To paint your face like that takes, I would say, what, 30 to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. So I can't help but think go like an hour or two before the big storming of the Capitol that where a guy was killed with a fire extinguisher, super sad. Go back an hour or two before and the QAnon shaman Jake Chanley is in his hotel room. Maybe the best Western, Washington, D.C., I don't know. And surely they shared rooms, so it's probably that point in the morning where the hotel room is just getting gross, Way too many people have shit and showered in the same bathroom for anyone to feel right about it. There's probably some uh, fast food bags from the night before making everything just smell gross. And we open on the QAnon shaman Jake Chanley sitting in front of the mirror with the lights on in the hotel just getting his face ready. And I was thinking you probably got to go all white first right to get the for the red and the blue to really show up so i just picture him he's bald so i'm sure his um buffalo headdress was sitting on the bed and he's sitting there you know bald painting his face white like a total you know psycho i kept thinking about the scene in joker too oh nice siren it's a crime show everybody i only use real sound effects on my show and um, just wait for it to pass. Probably going to forget what I was talking about. Um, yeah, so, oh, yeah, I kept thinking of the scene in The Joker where his buddies that he worked with at the clown company come over and his face is painted all white. And he goes, I killed my, he says something like, I killed my mother and I am off my meds. I'm feeling great. So I just picture the QAnon shaman, you know, getting ready for the big day. Gotta get his face painted and everything. And then one of his buddies comes in like, dude, come on. We're going to be late for the storming. What are you doing? And the QAnon shaman goes, dude, no, don't come in here and do that. You know I am the shaman, okay? I can't... I have to live up to my online persona. I got a whole nother stripe and all the stars left. Do not rush me. And his friend's just like, damn it, walks out of the room. I remember looking, I remember watching a, Q, uh, a video on QAnon like two years ago and I clicked on it and it was like a fringe group of nutso online people have, believe that the government is run by a cabal of satanic pedophiles. And I was like, hey, that's what I think. But knowing myself, if I would have looked into it, the part that I would have said, all right, I'm gone, is upon learning that you have to sit around and wait for anonymous entity that goes by Q to post. I don't do the anonymous letter thing, okay? I'm not sitting around for some letter to post to tell me the next move. It's probably some fat dude on 4chan or Reddit. I'm not doing it. And um, But the QAnon shaman and his bros and people are totally convinced that they were being contacted by a deep state... Um, I don't know. And I guess maybe it turned into Trump at some point, but he was, the QAnon shaman was full blown in. I am being contacted by people that have top secret clearance. They're contacting me personally. So that was before the riot and up until the riot. Since he's been arrested, he's on a hunger strike because of the, the organic food thing. His, the lawyer at his lawyer at first was saying, we we have, or he should get a, Trump should pardon him. He should get a pardon. And then when that came out totally unrealistic, then his, uh, the next defense his lawyer used in an interview was, hey, he just walked in an open door. He just, he, he, he didn't do anything wrong. He walked in an open door. And 
I think we're going to hear a lot of that defense, especially for the people that are charged with entering and remaining and maybe not of the vicious, violent actions, just that being there. He just walked through an open door, but I don't know if it's going to hold up because someone died by a fire extinguisher in order to get the door open. So yeah, the door is open, but there's a cop laying there with blood rushing out of his mouth in order for it to be open. And now, here we are a month later, like I said, and his lawyer is saying that he wants to and is willing to testify against Trump at Trump's impeachment uh, hearing. So in one month, he went from Trump is contacting me, the face-painted buffalo headdress-wearing dude in Phoenix that sounds like a lunch lady because he screams his head off all day, he, he went from thinking the president of the United States is contacting me personally to a month later saying I was totally tricked and I would like to testify against Trump in, in he's facing one charge of inciting an insurrection in impeachment courts. And at least at first, our old pal Alan Dershowitz was representing him and he did a totally insane interview on court tv where he said he's talking about the riot at the capitol and you know he doesn't want the word terrorism to be used when talking about it because he you know was defending trump and he at dershowitz you know still relaxed from his fully underwear massage said something like it was it's not terrorism i was talking to my friends in israel and they were saying, that's not terrorism. And we were laughing. And it's like, Alan, shut up. That would be like something horrible happening in Israel and me being like, yeah, I talked to my friend in Baltimore and he said it wasn't terrorism. We were laughing. It's pretty funny. And, and then, but I think since that interview, I don't know if he's defending Trump in the impeachment. I saw that he wasn't and I don't know. I haven't followed it. But you got to think the QAnon shaman Jake Chanley, who's on his hunger strike and is ready to testify a, one month later from the person he thought was, you know, on fully behind him, sending him the top secret information. It really shows you that you don't, you can't fall for, you know, I have a rule. I don't fall for any politicians. I kind of got tricked a little bit um, when I was in college going to CSU, you know, that time in my life. And I thought that Bush and his war in Iraq was the biggest disaster you could even fathom. And then along came Obama and he was preaching change, which is a very um, powerful uh, platform for a politician to be able to campaign on is change. The shit sucked, right? I'm the change. And so Obama came in with, you know, change, man. And I was in college and just maybe a little bit naive and just totally fell for it. He came and spoke at um, CSU when I went there. And I went to the thing and I had a headband on that said change. And I was listening to him. And really the whole thing makes my whole body wince at this point. And then I remember I moved to New York and all of the... Um, like my, the corner store deli, the bodega right by my place, I'd go in there and all the guys that owned it and ran it were from Yemen, just good dudes. And what these dudes, like maybe 10 of them ran this bodega. And what they do is they work 12 hours on, 12 hours off. It stays open 24 hours. So they work 12 hour shift, noon to midnight. And then they have 12 hours off and they do that for a year. No weekends or anything. They, they laughed at the way we do things. They go, you work five days and then you take two days off. But by the time the first day's over and you're on your second day off, you're just worrying, oh God, my weekend's over. What am I going to do? And you just, you can't even enjoy the second day. They're like, put some time in, make a little money. So they work, they do that 12 on 12 off for a year. And then they take a full year off and they don't work for a year. And they all rotate. So say there's 10 of them and you know, five of them are running the place and the five are on their year off. And then the, the next year you wouldn't see any of these. 
and I got to know them, you know, good dudes and everything. And one time I go in there, it was actually Super Bowl Sunday. And one guy was finishing up his year of work with no weekends, 12 on, 12 off. And he wanted to go back to Yemen and sit on the beach. And I, you know, I came in and I go, hey, man, like, are you, you know, are you excited to go back home and have a break? Finally, I see you in here all the time. And his, uh, his eyes like welled up and he was like, yeah, actually, I can't go back right now. The, the drone strikes, you know, under Obama, the drone strikes are just insane right now. And, and here it is, Super Bowl Sunday here in America. And this guy's like, can't even go home because who knows why we're constantly drone striking Yemen. And we're sitting there and I was like, yeah, hey, sorry, man. And, um, and then someone comes in and goes, hey, man, can I order 50 hot wings? And he had to, like, you know, get the, get the tear out of his eye, like, yeah, and go in and put 50 hot wings in the fryer for some guy's Super Bowl party. But that was, for me, that was the last time I was like, all right, these politicians, they do not love me. I'm not, I'm not going to count on any of them. And uh, then I ended up, I'm going to end this episode with a story. I actually ended up meeting Obama, right, at the end of his term, which, bizarre circumstances, my uh, brother-in-law is a helicopter pilot for the Navy. uh, he, He and my sister and my niece are living in Portugal. That's where he's stationed right now. But before Portugal, he was stationed in Hawaii and... My parents and I went out to Hawaii to, for Christmas to hang out with them, and we stayed on the military base. So, um, like, if you have a family coming to visit you on the military base, you can sign up and reserve this house, and it's right on the beach, and it was super sweet. So we're sitting the first morning. We're in Hawaii in our private house on the military base, and my sister calls, and it's like early in the morning, and she goes, you, you wouldn't believe it. We came to work out. There's a gym on the base. There's a grocery store. Like once you get in the security with all the machine guns, it just feels like a town. And she goes, you wouldn't believe it. I'm, I was running on the treadmill, and Secret Service came into the gym and said, and only my sister's in the gym running on the treadmill. And the Secret Service goes, hey, um, the president is going to come and run on the treadmill next to you. So just don't like bother him or ask for a picture or do anything sudden movements. And she was like, okay, well, can I call my husband in to like meet him? It's pretty crazy. And they said, let him work out, let him do his thing. And then after he works out right in front of the gym, sometimes he'll shake some hands or do something. And so my sister is like, yeah, okay, acts like she has to go to the bathroom, calls my mom, my dad, and I, who are at our, you know, drinking coffee on our little beach house on the military base, and she goes, the president is running on the treadmill, and, you know, it was probably like a 32-minute walk or like a 30-second drive to where the gym is. She was like, you guys should come down. You maybe could meet the president. And we weren't doing anything, and was like, okay, yeah, that sounds awesome. So we go down, and we're just waiting outside of the gym. It's beautiful Hawaii, and uh, the Secret Service comes, and I just had like a swim trunk on, and they really like pat you down. I was like, whoa, hey, and they just really checked you, and we're standing there and wearing all Lululemon. Barack Obama comes out of the gym, and there was eight, maybe like eight uniformed um military you know people and th- they had heard he was there and they wanted to meet him and then it was our little family and then maybe like a couple other people and he comes out and the military people like salute because he's like the top boss right and so he comes to them which i thought was cool and he immediately tells them like at ease gentlemen at ease and you can really tell why he moved up politics because he's charismatic and he's tall and he you know he makes you feel good about yourself and so he started with the eight um, service members which i thought was cool and he went through every single one of them all eight which i also think was cool and he talked to him he said how's your holiday break going how's you know what how's home life and he went through each one 
And these are, you know, like I said, service members who that's the, is that's their boss. That's who. And then it gets to me. And like I said, I was really not happy with him after being really pumped about him wearing the stupid headband change, man. I was really not too happy with him. This was by the end almost of his second term. And so I always thought like, Maybe I should say, like, be, be easy on, or as he was going through the, the eight servicemen, I had time. Should I say, like, be easy on Yemen, or should I say something? Or, and so he was talking to each of them, and then it gets to me, and he, so he goes, and who are you? And what came out was, I felt a little bit weird, because they're like, you know, in the military, are serving their country, and, and all I said was, I'm just a guy. That's what came out. I, my, probably my one chance to ever talk to a leader of a superpower, you know, arguably the leader of the free world. And all I said was, quote, I'm just a guy. And he was just like, all right, <laughs> and moved on. And that's it. That was, that was me meeting the president of the United States. So um, I think I'm going to cut it off there. I had a whole actually other thing about how I think um, the Capitol riots accomplished zero and now big tech companies feel even more emboldened and more like now's the time to censor and, uh, and how all the tech CEOs are definitely having sex with their computers and they're probably going to birth some sort of freaky AI that we're going to have to fight against. But I think I'm going to leave that part out and because uh, we're already at 20 minutes. So I'm going to cut it off there. I love you all. I will see you soon. Why? Stavin' why? Shamita.